Chapter Nine: How to Use the Wheel. To set about getting rich in a scientific way, you do not try to apply your willpower to anything outside of yourself. You have no right to do so. It is wrong to apply your will to other men and women in order to get them to do what you wish done. It is as fragrantly wrong to coerce people by mental power as it is to coerce them by physical power. If compelling people by physical force to do things for you reduces them to slavery, compelling them by mental means accomplishes exactly the same thing. The only difference. Is in methods. If taking things from people by physical force is robbery, and taking things by mental force is robbery also, there is no difference in principle. You have no right to use your willpower upon another person, even for his own good, for you do not know what is for his good. The science of getting rich does not require you to apply power or force to any other person in any way whatsoever. There is not the slightest necessity for doing so. Indeed, any attempt to use your will upon others will only tend to defeat your purpose. You do not need to apply your will to things in order to compel them to come to you. That would be simply trying to coerce God. And would be foolish and useless as well as irreverent. You do not have to compel God to give you good things any more than you have to use your willpower to make the sun rise. You do not have to use your willpower to conquer an unfriendly deity or to make stubborn and rebellious forces do your bidding. Substance is friendly to you and is more anxious to give you what you want than you are to get it. To get rich, you need only to use your willpower upon yourself. When you know what to think and do, then you must use your will to compel yourself to think and do the right things. That is the legitimate use of the will in getting what you want. To use it in holding yourself to the right course, use your will to keep yourself thinking and acting in the certain way. Do not try to project your will, all your thoughts, all your mind. Out into space to act on things or people. Keep your mind at home. It can accomplish more there than elsewhere. Use your mind to form a mental image of what you want and to hold that vision with faith and purpose. And use your will to keep your mind working in the right way. The more steady and continuous your faith and purpose, the more rapidly you will get rich, because you. Will make only positive impressions upon substance, and you will not neutralize or offset them by negative impressions. The picture of your desires, held with faith and purpose, is taken up by the formless and permeates it to great distances throughout the universe. For all I know, as this impression spreads, all things are set moving towards its realization. Every living thing. Every inanimate thing and the thing is yet uncreated are steered toward bringing it into being that which you want. All force begins to be exerted in that direction. All things begin to move toward you. The minds of people everywhere are influenced toward doing the things necessary to the fulfilling of your desires, and they work for you unconsciously. But you can check all this by starting a negative impression in the formless substance. Doubt or unbelief is as certain to start a movement away from you as faith and purpose are to start one toward you. It is not understanding this that most people who try to make use of mental science in getting rich make their failure. Every hour and moment you spend in giving heed to doubts and fears. Every hour you spend in worry, every hour which your soul is possessed by unbelief, sets a current away from you in the whole domain of intelligent substance. All the promises are unto them that believe, and unto them only. Notice how insistent Jesus was upon this point of belief, and now you know the reason why, since belief. Is all important. It behooves you 
to guard your thoughts and as your beliefs will be shaped to a different very great extent by the things you observe and think about it is important that you should command your attention and here the will comes into use for it is by your will that you determine upon what things your attention shall be fixed if you want to become rich you must not make a study of poverty things are not brought into being by thinking about the opposites health is never to be attained by studying disease and thinking about disease righteousness is not to be promoted by studying sin and thinking about sin and no one ever got rich by studying poverty and thinking about poverty medicine as a science of disease has increased disease religion as a science of sin has promoted sin and economics as a study of poverty will fill the world with wretchedness and want do not talk about poverty do not investigate it or concern yourself with it never mind what its cause are you have nothing to do with them what concerns you is the cure do not spend your time in charitable work or charity movements all charity only tends to perpetuate the wretchedness it aims to eradicate i do not say that you should be hard-hearted or unkind and refuse to hear the cry of need but you must not try to eradicate poverty in any of the conventional ways put poverty behind you and put all that pertains to it behind you and make good get rich that is the best way you can help the poor and you cannot hold the mental image which is to make you rich if you fill your mind with pictures of poverty do not read books or papers which give circumstantial amounts and accounts of the wretchedness of the tenement dwellers of the horrors of child labor and so on do not read anything which fills your mind with gloomy images of want and suffering you cannot help the poor in the least by knowing about these things and the widespread knowledge of them does not tend at all to do away with poverty what tends to do away with poverty is not the getting of pictures of poverty into your mind but getting pictures of wealth into the minds of the poor you are not deserting the poor in their misery when you refuse to allow your mind to be filled with pictures of that misery. Poverty can be done away with, not by increasing the number of well-to-do people who think about poverty, but by increasing the number of poor people who purpose with faith to get rich. The poor do not need charity, they need inspiration. Charity only sends them a loaf of bread to keep them alive in their wretchedness or gives them an entertainment to make them forget for an hour or two. But inspiration will cause them to rise out of their misery. If you want to help the poor, demonstrate to them that they can become rich. Prove it by getting rich yourself. The only way in which poverty will ever be banished from this world is by getting a large and constantly increasing number of people to practice the teachings of this book. People must be taught to become rich by creation, not by competition. Every man who becomes rich by competition throws down behind him the ladder by which he rises and keeps others down. But every man who gets rich by creation opens a way for thousands to follow him and inspires them to do so. You are not showing hardness of heart or an unfeeling disposition when you refuse to pity poverty, see poverty, read about poverty, or think or talk about it, or to listen to those who do talk about it. Use your willpower to keep your mind off the subject of poverty and to keep it fixed with faith and purpose on the vision of what you want. End of this chapter. Another great chapter by this great, great, great author, William Wattles. This chapter is uh, easier to understand than the one I just read that you have to check on my channel to follow. This is much simpler. I think a lot of us, myself included, come to the Love Attraction and see it either as being completely 
far-fetched, exaggerated, uh, pretty much a bunch of bullshit. Or we see this something completely easy that takes no effort. That is almost like a genie in the lamp. That you have found the genie in the lamp. And to a certain extent it is that way. It is that way. However, on both sides of this equation, there's a lack of accountability. Because those people who think that this is a bunch of bullshit, they are not accountable. And those who think that it's easy and is, you just need to snap your finger or rub the genie in the lamp can get whatever you want, they're also not accountable. Why? Because they are not really doing what they should be doing, which is putting it to the test, seeing it for what it is. Law of attraction is not true. Are, are three words I don't really like to use because they have been thrown around too often and now they just a lot of people see the law of attraction as something that is unreal not surreal unreal surreal is when you start using it and you see starting to see the result good or bad that's surreal but they see the law of attraction as something that's unreal that is not true but the basics of the law of attraction is that your thoughts create that's james allen we are the sum total of our thoughts. As a man thinking, so he will be. So shall he be. Something like that. It's not something that's apart from us that we need to learn. It's something that it is in us. What we need to do is educate ourselves, ourselves on how to use it to our advantage deliberately. The law of attraction applies to everybody, but not necessarily deliberately. Deliberately, it means that you put all your effort into making it work for you. That's where the willpower is. In that case, and that's what I think a lot of people who are on the spectrum of the love of church and something amazing is the genie of the lamb, tend to give up. Why? Because as soon as you tell them that there is some effort, there is some action, because willpower is still action, they tend to give up. They don't realize that, yes, there is an effortless part. Yes, it should come easily. Yes, you should not coerce yourself and try to cajole your subconscious mind to get what you want. That's very true. But it doesn't mean that the effort is not required. The effort that is not required is an active effort that overworked yourself. I'll give you another example. If you are to work out three times per week, it's still an effort, but it's a reasonable effort. Because you're not pushing yourself too hard, but you're still pushing yourself to a certain extent for your muscle to grow. But if you were to work out twice a day, every day, seven days a week, and go 100% intensity, you'll be killing yourself. Same goes with the mind. That's why sometimes you tend to attract the opposite because you're pushing too hard. You have to be in the zone almost when it comes to manifestation and the law of attraction. It's not about coercing, it's about cooperation. That's a quote by, Neb uh, no, sorry, by Joseph Murphy. The subconscious mind works with cooperation, not coercion. Remember that. But you still need to put the effort. And the effort is more so in the discipline than the pushing. The willpower is the discipline to not allow our mind to be fed with the wrong things. If you want to manifest a woman or a man, you cannot read stuff, you cannot feed your mind with stuff like all women are, all women are sluts, or all men are cheaters, or all wo that women want are your money, all that men want is sex. If you constantly feed your mind with this kind of stuff, how can you attract a specific person? Yes, you can attract, but it will not necessarily be the right one. You can attract a person, not a specific one. That's what I'm trying to say. You have to believe things of good rapport. That's what Neville Goddard said. If you have good thoughts, 
about people, about women, about men, then you can attract a specific person that is aligned with what you truly want. The example of this chapter, and I don't want to make it about only money and wealth, even though this book is about this, but in its essence, it's all about manifestation, whatever you want. If you want to manifest money, wealth, success in business, in success in your career, in your professional endeavors, you cannot think about poor things. You cannot think about poverty. You cannot dwell on how bad the economy is. You cannot dwell on how this person started this business and failed and you want to start the same kind of business. You cannot focus on this. You only focus on what works to your advantage, what aligns with you. Those are the facts that you create. You only want to picture the end result and hold fast to your faith. That's the thing. Earl Nightingale, the great Earl Nightingale said that faith is persistent and persistent is faith. That was one of the most revealing quotes I ever heard in my life. And I'm sharing it with you guys. For a long time, I was questioning, what is all that faith business? What does it mean to have faith? And now when I read this quote, it made sense to me. And I didn't really finish the quote. Let me finish the quote. Faith is persistent and persistent is faith. Because if you did not have persistent, you will not have faith. Which, in other words, you need to persist. You need to hold this vision and persist until it becomes true in your 3D reality. So when you persist, you persist in your mind. And that's where the willpower, but let's change willpower with discipline. When you discipline your mind not to feed it with the wrong stuff and not to react to negative circumstances that might not seem like they're aligned. They might be aligned because the bridge of incidents is one that you cannot devise nor you can fathom. Those are the words by Neville Goddard. You cannot fathom the way, the best way to get. You might think you can believe. That's why we don't mess with the middle in Neville Goddard terms. We don't think about what needs to happen. Because when we think about what we needs to happen, we think we can devise a better way than God, the universe. And God's, God's ways, the universe ways are greater than our ways. Neville Goddard said that in a, a, when you plant the seed, the universe will fashion, devise a bridge of incidents that is far too complicated for you to fathom. Yes, in hindsight, when you get it, you might be able to understand it a bit, but there's so many things behind closed doors, behind the curtains, invisible things that are happening. As he said, you don't need to coerce anybody. You don't need to mentally or uh, physically coerce anybody because as soon as you have this discipline in your mind and you hold on to your faith, everything will move, even things that have not been created. And people, that's what Neville Goddard also would call everybody as you pushed out. So not only you will be moved, but the entire world, things that are created, things that are not created, will move to fashion this as a reality for you. Because remember, we are the gods of our own reality and we cannot see outside of the construct of our own reality. So when you see someone as being a main actor in your world, you are giving them, you are giving, sorry, you are giving away your power. You should realize one thing, you are the main person who has the power in this script of your life. Nobody else. When, when Neville Goddard said, we are the gods of our reality, it doesn't mean that I am a god and you are not. You are the God of your own reality, I am the God of my own reality. It doesn't mean that I am a God and nobody else is powerful. Everybody is powerful, but remember, we have our own reality. And I don't want to get into parallel, parallel realities and how, how I can get this and they can get this, even though that's not important right now. Although I have to say that William Waddles, even in this chapter, talks about not competing, but creating. When you compete with others, you believe that something is more powerful than yourself in your own reality. There's no competition in your reality. Which means that even though you might believe that you have competition by a third party if you're manifesting a specific person or somebody is taking over the same business as you and you believe there's competition, there's none. In your mind, there shouldn't be. You don't need to compete with others because you stay, you stay faithful to your vision. That's all you need to do. The competition 
will be irrelevant, whether in business, in your professional career, or as a specific person. If your specific person happens to be in a relationship with another person, this third party only exists in your reality because you have created them. Now it might be far-fetched, but you don't need to go that far. But still, in this reality, you can make do. And it's not mental coercion because that's... You're not trying to make them be someone. You are only holding fast to a vision where you are this person. If it makes any sense. So you hold a vision that is good for yourself. And good for others, obviously. You're not coercing anybody. Everybody is you pushed up. So you want to discipline your mind to see the things you want to see and forsake the rest. Hear what you want to hear, forsake what you don't want to hear. Feel what you want to feel and forsake what you don't want to feel. And when I say forsake, I mean surrender and let go. Do not dwell upon that. Think about good things, which in other words mean living in the air. So that's the only willpower slash discipline you need. That's the only effort you need to do on yourself. Nobody else. And it is a bit difficult at the beginning because we think that we should act in this external world so much. And it doesn't mean that you non will not act in this external world. However, when you place your effort on the inside world, your imagination, your 4D reality, everything will be moved including yourself so you do not need to think about what needs to be done because you will be moved you will not even know let's say your specific person is on, is in starbucks right now you don't know this specific person is in starbucks right now but some for wrong reason you will have a thoughts of getting a caramel latte at starbucks for example and you end up there meeting them unbeknownst to you they'll be there you didn't know that how can you fathom this just once you understand that you cannot understand, you cannot devise a plan better than God or the universe, then it's liberating because you know you only need to focus on this because whatever you think is the greatest plan to get what you want, he will not be even close to the greater plan that God and the universe has in store for you. The path of least resistance is the one that has been devised by somebody else but you. You have only to focus on your world. That's it. Your inside world. The rest will unfold as it should. Thank you so much for listening. I am Sebastian, your Manifestation Mindset Meditation Coach. Please check the links in the description box below if you want to know more about me. Thank you so much for listening. Please like, share and subscribe for more disciple content. And I'll see you very soon.